They say Peru has the best food in the world, and when people talk about food, my ears perk up. That's why we came here to find out for ourselves what the secret is that makes the food in this country so unique. We traveled from the Pacific to the Andes, the desert, and everything in between. No stone was left unturned during our search. Did we find the secret? Well, join us on this three-chapter journey to discover for yourself. Hey guys, I do an awful lot of traveling and it doesn't matter where I am in the world or with whom I'm speaking, everybody says the same thing. Peruvian food is the best in the world. Hey, thanks a lot. And this ain't a Peruvian restaurant. No, I'm going straight to the source so that I can discover Peru's secrets for myself and be done with this once and for all. Peru has many, many secrets, but I think that the geographical diversity that they have, it's gotta be the reason why they have the best food in the world. Think about it, close to the equator, so you can grow food year round, and then they have such a range of altitudes. Down at sea level, they can grow fruits and vegetables that you and I know well. And then up at altitudes, other stuff grows that we don't have access to. Right now I'm at Lake Titicaca. I'm more than two miles up, almost four kilometers. The air is very, very thin, but this has to be the secret of why Peru has the best food in the world. Their land, their verticality, it's unbelievable. Let's get on a boat with Ronaldo and test this hypothesis. Ronaldo? Are these man-made islands? Yes, I have 100 islands. And they're made from uh, some sort of like seaweed straw that grows in the lake? Yes, use that. Totora is the principal uh, plant for the use for the homes, for the uh, eat. Okay, wow, so they're building the homes with this stuff. They're cutting it about three feet under every 30 days? Every days. Basically, they're always mowing the grass, which is the Totora and this forms the base of the islands that they've made here, but it also gives them the material to make the roofs on the houses, the boats, yes. the comida. Uh -huh. Yes, for it, it's good. And food too. Este, vamos a interpretar cómo es que se construyen las islas. La que les va a explicar es la señora Rosa, la presidenta. Yes, estos son los bloques, estos son raíces de la totora, se llama Kili. Mm. Estos después lo unimos una sola plataforma, así mira, lo amarramos. Estos trabajan los varones, mm, sí. una sola plataforma. Mm. Y después lo ponemos los totora, así. Los hombres van a cortar la totora, esta es la primera semana, y otra semana así. Esta es la casa antigua, se llama Chuglia. Muso, Juasi, Presidenta, Juasi, Casa Blanca. Esta es la casa de la Presidenta, la Casa Blanca. Esta es la cocina gas, familia. Esto nosotros vamos a pescar, los niños van a la escuela, Acá no hay parque, no hay cine, no hay discoteca. Jóvenes, señoritas van a enamorarse dentro de los totorales. Van dos y regresan tres. Por eso lo decimos taxi romántico. ¿Qué es lo que falta? A ver. En las anclas, ¿no? Para que no nos quede el viento, ni a Mantaní, ni a Taquili, ni a Bolivia. Es ancla de la isla. The 
The people here on the island of Uros are very, very nice. Lake Titicaca is absolutely beautiful. It's amazing that they've built an entire civilization around basically this totora. It's a building material, it's something they eat, it's medicinal, it's tea. It really is incredible. So I'm starting to think, you know, the secret of Peru is ingenuity to make something from seemingly nothing. And there's this uh, constant optimism that I'm feeling. So the first thing I'm gonna put in my box is these pumas of the lake. These are supposed to protect me from evil spirits if I put them in my house. And um, so that I feel more one with Peru and the people, I think this is the perfect thing to put in my box. Let's go. So here I am up high, sort of on a lookout tower, and I can see the more than 100 small little islands all around. It's like nothing I've ever seen before. Incredibly native, but technology has found its way in as well. If you look, you can see tons of solar panels everywhere. It's incredible that an ancient civilization is using what we will power the future with right now. They're ahead of their time while being traditional at the same time. It's incredible. Right now I'm gonna head over to the second island where we have some people ready to sing and dance for us. I'm excited for the show. So there's only three rules on the island. There's no stealing, there's no lying, and there's no being lazy. Now because of this, crime is non-existent. There are no police on the island and they don't need it. Ronaldo, where are we now? This is now is in the principal main square in the, from the Taquile Island. Who lives here? The custom is, is uh, Incas and pre-Incas. So the people that live here are descendants of Incas and they still hold some of the traditions that have evolved a little bit, dancing together, dancing with the children. The language is Quechua. It's from the East language, the Incas. Wow. Uh -huh. So they didn't lose the language. So even though all of this is Lake Titicaca, they are literally speaking the Inca language here. It's interesting how they've uh, preserved uh, their cultures. Ronaldo just told me that the trout came from either Argentina or Chile. It was brought here and it sort of became an invasive species, eating all the little fish. But it's not a problem because uh, all the local cultures here now eat that trout, so it's feeding everybody. And then, because of this altitude and, and the crazy terrain that we're on, we have a total microclimate that's growing these very special potatoes and quinoa and vegetables, corn. Yeah, all natural, all organic, free range. I'm really hungry. Thank you for all this information. Yes. Let's eat. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. True fact, the tomato originated in Peru. It's literally like one of my favorite ingredients. It comes from here. Here they are sewing everything that they sew. You can see the kids are working, the adults are working, and there's a lot of colors involved. One of the ways that they dye the yarn is with the fire. You can see that in the distance here.
want to talk about absolutely natural beauty, then Lake Titicaca and everything around it, it's the place to be. I've never seen anything like this. Between the altitude, the landscape, the people, the incredibly delicious and unique food, I had an experience that I'll never forget. And when I descended the mountain today, at the end, my leg was actually twitching. I was so tired. And then I jumped in the water, and now I'm reinvigorated to go to the best restaurant in the whole area. I'm gonna go to Doña Julia's, and I'm gonna try her lamb. I can't wait. Man, I'm starving. It's been a long day. We're finally here at Doña Julia's, and we're gonna try her famous cancacho. So let's meet her. Hi, Doña Julia. I'm kidding. Come on. Hola. Hola, ¿cómo está este señor Juan? Bien, bienvenidos al restaurante Alcanches, Doña Julia. Me va a traer su matecito de muña para que se sirva. Okay. Uh, she said, uh, while you're waiting for the cancacho, why don't you have a nice muña tea? Muña tea is a type of mint. Sírvase su matecito de muña mientras que usted se sirve su mate. Le va a traer su cancachito para que le guste. Ah. El plato, el plato bandera de mi pueblo de Melgar, Ayabiri. Fantastic. I honestly only got about 30% of that, but it sounds like it's from the, the Mate family. It's a type of tea. Uh, it's good for altitude sickness, which I don't have, but we are at 12,500 feet, uh, and, and I'm cold, so I'm excited to drink something warm. Oh, also, I think she said it has to do with the digestion. So to drink this with the cancacho is a perfect match. So Doña Julia is butchering up the lamb right now and what she's gonna do is marinate it in this absolutely pungent and fantastic marinade. Ah, which is made of allspice berries, mashed up, garlic, cumin seeds, some kind of dried pepper, salt, and a dark beer. She made some nice cuts. She put the salt in there so the flavor can really penetrate deep in. You can see she's massaging the wonderful marinade that she made deep inside. That's fantastic. This is gonna marinate for three hours so that the flavors can sort of reach that equilibrium with the meat. And then it's gonna go in the oven for three hours. And for like the last half hour, the potatoes will go in. But this just goes in the oven, wood-fired oven, a beautiful wood-fired oven, by the way. Very big. I would love to make pizza in it. Uncovered, so this way it dehydrates, it gets crispy. We're not trying to steam it here. I have a very small wood-fired oven that I cook in, and I've, I've cooked leg of lamb before, but because it's so small, I can't have the fire going, so I build up the fire, and I take the fire out and cook on the residual heat. Doña Julia has a much bigger oven. Obviously, she's been doing this a lot longer than I have, but uh, I know that there's a lot of technique involved in cooking with this method. It's hard to manage the temperature and everything, but she's got it all under control. So the meat's in, it's cooking, that oven. This oven is gorgeous, it really is. And the potatoes just go in with a little bit of salt. And then when everything comes out, the fat of the lamb gets coated all over the potatoes when she puts it in her ecological microwave, which is all the paper wrapped up and everything. I think it's really smart because you get the moist aromatics of the lamb transferring over to the potato when everything's hanging out there. And it's also gonna take that crispy edge and soften it a little bit so that our teeth don't have to work so hard. It's also gonna make sure that it rests and the temperature is consistent throughout. So I think this is actually a really smart idea. Cook it real hard, get it nice, bring it here, let everything soften, let everything meld, mingle. I want to eat, I'm starving. Aquí está el cancacho. Ya cocidito para poder servirse y degustar el cancacho, chiquísimo cancacho de Ayaviri. Palperí y para el mundo, cancacho ayavireño Doña Julia, va a ser ahora conocido tanto nacional e internacionalmente. When I asked how I should eat this, she said I should definitely eat it with my hands. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do right now. Here we go, getting in there. Oh, 
Dios las bendiga. Ay. The sweet lady. I don't know what to say. It was an honor for me to eat your food, so thank you. So here we are at the end of the day. Going into the day, I thought it was the climate of Peru that makes the food so fantastic. And I think that there's definitely something to that. We went way up high in the mountains where the food has to fight to survive so the flavor is different. So there's definitely something to that. Yes, the climate makes the ingredients different. Yes, that makes Peruvian food special. But I think there's more to it than that. Doña Julia put a whole bunch of love into this dish. You can't just put ingredients together and expect something amazing, no. You have to have experience, you have to have love. She showed all of those things to me today. I'm extremely grateful. But in my box, I am going to bring two ingredients. One is Amelia Rosada, which is a local potato, very, very delicious. And the other is ají amarillo, a yellow pepper. So I'm gonna take these two special ingredients, I'm gonna put them in my box. We're gonna continue our journey on to chapter two. I think I'm onto something here, but I also know that I'm thinking too narrow-minded. It's not just ingredients. There's more to Peru than that. <laughs>